Hello again, I'm here with my friend James, uh, and I should have mentioned this in previous videos, I apologize if any background noise, uh, we are outside of James's house, I traveled to get here, and I'm just using the camera mic because that's all I have right now. Uh, so, for people who have probably complained on the previous videos, not much I can do. So, <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it's, I know it's, it looks like a garden, but it's a noisy neighborhood. So, <laughs> um, so as we mentioned in the past, I mean, You've done a lot of programming, you worked for a web design company, you've done a lot of Java and other languages, but the C is probably your favorite language. Oh yeah, I, I like say. C. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I've played around with C. I can accomplish stuff. Um, my code is probably horrible when I write it, but it gets the job done, yeah. and I just haven't put enough time into learning C. Yeah. Um, but years ago, I bought a book on programming, which I should never do because it's always easier just look up what I need to do online and figure it out. Uh, but I bought this book and I'm reading through it and I'm going, this is good. I'm learning C, each chapter had a different topic. And then I got to the topic of pointers. <laughs> and I'm halfway through this chapter and I'm like, I don't know what's going on. I'm skipping this chapter. But every chapter after that had to do, referred back to the pointer chapter. And since then I, I understand what pointers are. Uh, and why we need them, not in great detail because I don't use them often. Uh, I also find that <laughs> when I talk to people who are big C people, um, which I think I think C is a great, great language, uh, but they all seem to really, really want you to love pointers. I was talking with some <laughs> in my IRC channel the other day, and I just mentioned how... Pointers will set you free. Yeah, uh, I, I was... I was talking to someone and I just mentioned that I understand the concept of pointers, but I don't use them enough to really grasp the, you know, everything about them. So he goes on explaining how they work, and I wasn't really looking for explanation, and I just started laughing, ha ha ha, lol, whatever. I'm like, you remind me of my best friend James. <laughs> <laughs> I, go, I go, how come is it every C person just wants to love pointers? Yeah. Um, so why don't we start off, and why don't you just explain what a pointer is? So yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, I'll, I'll go a step further, and okay. I won't answer your question. Okay, <laughs> great. That's great. <laughs> I'll say that, like, yeah. The, so there, there are certain things in programming, certain obstacles that once you overcome, like you hit that Zen moment where mm -hmm. you, you just feel like, oh, I understand things on a whole another level now. Mm -hmm. Whether this is a useful thing to ever use again, or or, or not, then then once I understand it, I kind of understand programming on a whole another level. And you know, if I could just plug some books, uh, you know, obviously uh, the C programming language by Carnegie and, and Richem, Richie, uh, that's a very important book to learn C. Uh, Sick P was a lecture series that was very important in the laboratory I worked in. Were required reading, required to watch the free videos put out by MIT. Now, real quick, the first book you mentioned. Yeah. Um, those are the guys who. Those wrote are the C guys who wrote the C programming they language. Wrote the C thing, and then the. Book and Richie was... even wrote, uh, it, you know, came up with Unix. He wanted to have an operating system. Unix is what he envisioned. Okay. And so, if I get this, if I get the story wrong, nobody kill me. Right. Okay? And he passed. Away, I'm not a historian. He so. passed away the same week as Steve Jobs. Yeah, right? so that, that was the whole the big. big the, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, I mean, he was <laughs> the one that came up. He wanted a Unix operating system. He had an idea what it would be like, and and he needed a language to write it in, and he wrote it in C. Uh, um, but anyway, so yeah. Man, that's hardcore. Yeah, yeah. Not only do yeah. I want to write an operating yeah. system, I'm going to create my own language to yeah. write the operating Sir. system in. Man, that's awesome. So, so, so <laughs> I think if you if you if you go through that book and you run all those exercises, and exercises are kind of boring. It's it's much more fun to have a project. Right. But exercises, if you run all those exercises, you, you should understand uh, not just pointers, but but a whole array of ideas from from C, and. Um, and I like SICKP because you, you understand functional programming language, which is a very difficult concept. Is SICKP short for something? Uh, it's structure and interpretation of... of uh, oh, That's good enough. That's more than I know. Structure and... Uh, 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 so, structure of, of, of computer programming. Structure okay. and interpretation of computer programming. Uh, but anyway, so, so uh, you know, once you understand kind of how functional programming languages work, once you understand how pointers work, and some people might say like object-oriented programming is very important to learn, but I just think that's a little bit easier of a concept for people mm -hmm. to learn. So you kind of, you can learn that one on your own pretty pretty easily, I think. But once you get those kind of concepts, you, each one of those kind of takes you to another level. So that's why I think I would be a, a pointer uh, aficionado, and I would I would preach to it because once you understand pointers, you understand something about how that computer works, especially a Unix operating system, to a whole other level. Now to answer your question, 
your your question was basically how do pointers work? Yeah, right? what yeah. are they? Now, because most languages, the higher level languages that are written in C are yeah. written to handle the pointers for right. you. So, so I don't have much experience with them because those are the languages so, I usually work and, and then work there's with. another way to look at that. You could you could say instead of thinking about pointers, another thing is just allocation of data. Mm -hmm. Like, where how does a computer know how much uh, uh, memory to allocate for all the data you're looking at? And and so for C, generally we C kind of it's not an assembly language where you have to explicitly say where to put every single bit of data, but it's kind of left to the user to start allocating and deallocating memory. And that if the user doesn't do it right, you can actually have things like memory leaks, where you you're not freeing up memory and you're, all of a sudden your computer has no memory, or uh, con uh, conversely you could start trying to access memory that was not actually allocated, try to put something in memory that wasn't allocated. And you get the seg fault, which in C it's really hard to figure out, you know, where did that seg fault come from? Quick thing, yeah. which would probably be a whole other video. <laughs> yeah. Um, but real popular right now, although this video will be released later on, um, the whole heart bleed thing. Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Which, which, so, let's yeah. not get into that. But that is a that that probably from the little bit I've read about it. Yeah, that's it's, an it's, example of of sharing of memory. They should memory be. memory has in the block of memory is is somehow you can use a C program that's been written uh, because it's so low level, so at the at the level of the operating system that it it basically has access to all the memory and and you're supposed to be writing it so that you're limiting the access. But if you wrote it incorrectly. All of a sudden, you're able to kind of glean some information off the off the edges of what you're supposed to be using it for. And really, uh, when I write stuff in C, which is really really basic basic yeah. stuff mostly, really I always have a fear in my back in back of my head that I'm going to write something, huh. which which I've mentioned to you because pretty much I write something in C and I send it to you, because yeah. <laughs> not only so you can show me a better way of doing it, but also because I'm always worried that. Not that, not that I've written anything that I've shared with the public because all of it's stuff I've done for my own personal use, but I'm just afraid that I'm going to leak something that I shouldn't. But, but with simple projects, that's less of a concern. Sure, yeah. Because uh, really, in the stuff I write, I really haven't really done too much deep with pointers other than storing variables. Yeah. And, and so, I mean, part of the beauty of C is you get to control that stuff. Mm -hmm. And so there, there's advantages to that. And, and again, for the learning process. It's, it's very good. But then all, most other programming language have, have you, I'm sure you heard the term garbage in, garbage out. Mm -hmm. And so based on how That's you're writing... nutrition when you eat. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the idea is that how you write the programming language, it'll actually automatically wrap that for you. It'll abstract it away from you and handle those things for you. And wherein in C, they don't, you're, you're supposed to build those, those abstracted layers for yourself. Uh, so it, yeah, I mean, there is a little bit of danger in it. But uh, you know, that's the fun, right? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, that's that's why <laughs> living on the edge. Yeah, right. That's why you want to play with pointers, is mm -hmm. because you you could break. If you couldn't break something, it wouldn't be fun. Right. 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 Yeah. It's, I mean, that's programming. If right? you don't, yeah, that's yeah. with computers in general. Yeah. If you haven't broken your system lately, you, you haven't know. learned anything. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so yeah, so use pointers. That they're fun. Yeah. You know how they work is. I mean, I think the best when I had my first aha moment with pointers is. You know, I started calling them addresses. Mm -hmm. I thought it was a much better way to think about a pointer. You know, yeah, you can think of it. Well, it's something that points to a memory address, but I think of it as an address. So it it gets really complicated in C because when you start saying, "Well, I pass a pointer to a function," what does that what does that mean? Well, in C, when you pass something to a function, it it makes a copy of that data in that function. So you can't actually affect it outside the scope of the function unless you pass the pointer. Because mm -hmm. you're essentially passing the address, and now you can affect what's at the address. You can't change the address, but you can affect what's at the address. Now, is this is that? No, never mind. Yeah. I was going <laughs> right. to say. I was going to say something, and it. What did that part out? It, Cut this here. It might be. <laughs> what I was about to say could have been very informative or sounded really, really stupid. So I'm not going to say. We'll leave that bonus footage. <laughs> um, yeah. So real quick, because we only have about a minute left. Yes. Um, you tell it the pointer. I want it to point to this block of memory. What? How does it know that this block of memory is free to use? Yeah. Well, typically you're not going to point the pointer anywhere. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you know, there's there's different ways to access the pointer. Either you'll have a variable and you'll want to grab the pointer to it, or sometimes you'll start with the pointer. But generally, the first thing the pointer is going to equal to, uh, the thing it's going to point to, uh, is it's something being returned from a malloc function. 
and a malloc function or 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 calloc or, or whatever function it is that, that does the allocation uh, is going to return an address. So let me use the term address, it makes it easier. Mm -hmm. So you make an address variable, you set it equal to a function that returns an address. Now you have an address of allocated memory. And when you're done with that, what you need to do, since you manually allocated it, when you're done, you need to free it. So you're gonna pass that same address to the free function and the free function will free the, the memory at that address. Great. Well, I thank you for joining me today. Uh, I thank you guys for watching. Please visit my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with the K. There should be a link in the description of this video if you're watching it on YouTube. And I'm really enjoying this conversation on C, so I think our next talk will basically be a continuation of this one. So, have a great day. But what I think, what I think really is a testament to is, is when you have when you have command line abilities to run a, to run a, to run a, a software, and it has the interface. Um, if you enjoy my tutorials and would like to see more, please think about contributing to my Patreon account at patreon.com forward slash metalx1000.